We're back. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to really pop out. At least it's that one that didn't go happen. Stop later on, maybe that's the, the strategy. Mm, but looking like Burns, Mubbing, Morley, Jua, and Armstrong gonna be your top five heading to the restart with 47 to go. I look at Jua and I say, Oh, your pit started and you have that penalty. The only thing is though, we don't have him on the overlays because of that, but you overcame it. Joseph Armstrong back there in fifth. He signed up down on the flat. He's been the trier that's gotten it done, but it's also been now all over this racetrack. From 43rd to 1st, can he get it done when the checkered flag waves? That's been Walker. He, I'd say, was really quiet early on, but he has been a consistent force at the top of this field for the better part of the last half of this race. It's time to get excited. If you already haven't been, I expect you to already be excited because of how this race has been. The one to go. Why can't I find a song? Burn. 
Burns at the Ford, Mubbick in the Chevrolet, no Toyota in the Fast Ford. Next one, Joseph Armstrong sitting in seventh. The time is now, as we'll have less than 50 laps to go in the Darrington Woodworking of Florida 500. And again, you're going to see on this restart, do they start playing games? Who gets out ahead of who, clearing who, or do you let somebody in to draft with them? Orly back to fourth, he's down the flat. They do that to save just that little bit of fuel because if they do get that green flag stop, it's all gas and go. You're not doing anything else towards the rest of this race. Jackson Carr, the great comeback, is up to nine. Andrew Cooney, Will Shack and company. 47 laps to go in the Darrington Woodworking Florida 500. It can't be this hard to find it. Burns gets the jump this time on Mubbin. He's going to clear and go down low. Right in front of that 42. Leaves daylight for Chew on the outside lane. Matt I just Browler can't find it. Racing for the Wood Brothers on the outside. He's going to have drafting help now. Right to the tail end of that five. A big I think it's not also that. As the outside lane now forms up with about the top five machines jumping wide. Four of those guys at the top five up top restarted on the bottom. They all went up in Jugendson and are all cleared the back. Spencer Burns back top of the board where he likes to be. Joseph Armstrong at fourth. Not where he wants to be. He wants to find a way around that two machine and quick for Aiden Walker. Back in position, but still time remaining with 46 to go on the line. Who's down low, leaves that bottom line. Andrew Moody, the defending winner of this event. Oh man, he's got help there too from Bull Shack. Shack trying to cook out Chevrolet. Puts two bow ties on the inside lane. Cooney off the board. Cooney looking for third. All this talk, all this dancer about a driver that drives the 24 on how can he back it up with a win? Well, he did it last year on CB. Making it up to the fourth position. The side Armstrong now trying to get ahead, but that top side is very strong. But she got to keep out with that 42 machine moving to the bar of the swipe. Burns crosses the bow. Locks it on in. These drivers have been bowled the dangerous all night long. Burns to the top. Moving to the lead. Downstairs with 45 to go. But now the dynamic duo. Burns Armstrong. Right there with each other again, right behind Muppet, no detail. Two by two, no three wide action. You're not going to see that right here because every time they go wheel to wheel, someone's in the middle and someone gets left out to dry. Joe wanted three wide there. It didn't work out. Frank Corley top of the board. And right behind him again, Cooney and Shaq, they are trying to make their way back up, but Muppet will not go away. Andrew Cooney and Frank both won an e-ticket in the past. Matter of fact, the top three of all won an e-ticket. With Burns in the Catbird seat sitting in fourth. Four lead at top. Four lead three wide. Two goes to the lead. And he's got Burns right there with them. They're going to leave that two on the high side. He'll go back behind the five ball. If there's one, but he's up the wall. Second, 
Walker is just creating that big cushion for the Chargers three wide. And even with that attack, though, the top five or so still single file just playing it smart for now. Burn for that huge push on Mummy. Rick White looking. You see these guys on the inside lane are trying to get it back going. Drew Chua has thundered his way up to the high banks of three and four and climbed the charts to third. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Still, no big change as I'm, I'm watching this, listening to music, now, and still, oh my god. Okay. Well, obviously, I didn't, wasn't the one that turned the bedroom eye on. folks because we're taking this straight to the end zone the gridiron features you got champagne falling back with jua momentarily they get the one into one and two kevin champagne on the bottom a huge walk to the back of from true jua Bila, Horley, Armstrong, Brower have all stayed back, knows the tail. What a fantastic race we've had tonight. Can Chua 
push the forward out in front and get the clean air for a move? I don't think so, because Burns is hanging tough still in that middle lane. Champagne, though, has been cleared. He can go top if he wants. He takes it right ahead of Burns. Further back, Demos jumps up into the high side. Three wide in the pack now. Bubbick has been shuffled out to the back half of the top ten. Yeah, he's struggling right now. He's just trying to get that forward momentum back to where he wants it to be for Frank Horley back there in that sixth spot. He's content as long as things don't go wrong. You hate to get shuffled through or blocked in with laps remaining, but at the same time with 35 laps to go, you think, so got a little bit of time. This isn't the last ditch effort. Tanner drafting downstairs. Chua, Fila, working together to three. And right behind them, they got that 21 of Brower. He's back in the mix. Gives the push. They all do bottom line with Chua. Barely gets out ahead, but here comes Burns pushing Kevin Champagne. He's got help. Top side again has now shuffled back. Early in this race, it was the bottom lane that showed him the strong line. But as the sun has set, this track has cooled off, and the grip levels have amped on up. It's the outside lane showing the way. How about Will Shaft? How about Brayden Lubbock? Justin Champagne, Andrew Cooney. Some guys that we may or may not have talked about outside that top eight. And there's a lot of guys who've been falling back. The, the pack is starting to split little by little. Some are falling off from the back of it. Up front, though, you now have Kevin Champagne trying to form up some kind of run. He's going to get blocked. Three, now he goes for the lead. The 3.33 lots to go for Chevrolet back up front again. And you see the three wide in the back. The big thing about early on was it was all consistent. It was like drivers moving in herds, but single file two by two. Now it has gone to the area where it's a very ragged and rough. Drivers shuffling, putting each other in harm's way, dumping guys out of line. You see Joseph Armstrong tired of waiting three wide up the middle. This is where things can spell disaster. But at the same time, it may be the only way to move forward if you're in the back half of the top ten. Yeah, he gets a push from Justin Champagne, but he's been falling back up front. Kevin Champagne tries to make a bonsai move to the lead. He's going to get a push again from Burns. Does he get past Chua? They're tied in the line. No exact count on how many laps Chua has led, but for Kevin Champagne, three of 169. Another driver that's waited in the back half and said it's go time. Lined up with Spencer Burns, who's trying to become the most leadingest driver in this event. He sits second to Joseph Armstrong at 53 of the 169. The only problem is Joe sits 11th on track, three wide with not a lot of breathing room. He's had a really oh, bad time. He's going to turn the 42. I think Mubbick cleared himself in a huge wreck in the back. We have a flip. Braden Mubbick up and into the air, spinning like a top. Caution will wave once again at Daytona. And it's the big one. That strikes with 32 laps remaining. Carlos Truther, Sean Rowe, Kenny Real, all involved. James Thurston. There's the Braden Mubbick machine. All chucked up on the nose. Maybe a 10, 12, 13 car pilot. It's coming towards the tail end of this race. And it takes out big names in the 4 to 500. Mubbick might have went down, but it looked like they almost went into each other. Like chat is losing it everyone is just thinking what happened why did it happen and a 30 chicken event looks glim here for the 42 that is your big one that's the big one that we have been due for for what months at this months. point yep we will not have free flag stops in this race we will have a 30 lap shootout Unbelievable. Let's go watch back. This After last month's massive solar flare added a 25th hour to the day. Businesses are wondering, what should we do? Big... So Watson Mubbick, he's, I, he seemed to be in relatively good position up top. And I think it's once you start getting these three wide, people got to block different runs. All right, so he goes down low for a moment. 
It should be right around here. It gets held up by the two. And that's him right there. You see the green car up top. Joe goes to the bottom for a four wide move. Oh. Oh. And that's the driver that's led the most laps here tonight. I think Joe's going to get through unscathed. You see Jacob Wilkerson maybe with a little bit of an issue on the nose after getting hit, but it started really when Kenny Real turns William Schmidt up the track. This is a reaction. Now you see the they're looking down low. They're looking at the spinning car right here. They're they're rubbernecking. Okay, that's, and, that's the best way to say and it. And then Mitchum gets into the back of him. I don't know why Real was going down the track. They were going to stay down there. Oh, for William Schmidt. Yes, he has an e-ticket win. That came from Homestead in the Ford 400. And there's Barmagal. Just lifts the 42 off the ground. He hits almost roof first. Mosteller gets into it. He's going to have minimal damage in this, but still damage nonetheless. But We thought we might get a flip tonight. We got one. Uh, we very much did. Let's go watch this full speed for the 42. on the outside. And he's probably thinking to himself, man, we didn't need to ride around with those guys. Once again, this is full song. And Joe's got a run right here. Joe's in the middle. Well, so he's three wide at this point, but Mother gets kind of held up. And he did come down. That 42 I, did come down a little he, bit. I think he self-cleared a little bit. I mean, he does have a history of doing that. Yeah, he went roof first up into that outside wall, no doubt about it. Three laps to go in the Darrington Woodworking Four to 500. Braden Muffick not out of this race. He's going to keep it going. But a lot of damage. These cars are tanks. That's for sure. Yeah. Now what does it look like? True Joy, your race leader. Max Swearage will get back on the lead lap, we think. I mean, this just shuffles it all. And, and look who's, who's in the top five. Andrew Goody is still up there. The big thing is, we still got 38 guys racing. Out of the race, unofficially, Benjamin A. White, River Payne, Sean Conklin, TCB, Jimmy Mullis, and I believe Ben White had an internet issue. That's why he was able he uh, pulled the cord out, done, see ya. You look at the guys still left on the lead lap. You have, I want to say 35, 34, maybe, should we say, 32. 32 drivers left on the lead lap. Dominic Barbagallo. actually. I think it just re or might just It should realign. Uh, oh, it really does come down to uh, where how they shuffle this thing out. So unofficially, around 30 drivers are on the lead lap with 29 laps to go in this event. True Jua, there he is on the bottom of your screen. The one that pit started got the penalty for it. Wood Brothers Finest, Matthew Brower. Can he bring that Fame 21 to victory lane? Andrew Cootie, he won this event last year. He's ready to try to do it again. And Spencer Burns sits there and forth. I'm not even moving. the heavy lifting in this race to stay up front and still has not left the top 20. It's an incredibly consistent night on his part. Time to get loud. Time to get excited because we're going to have just 28 laps to go here in this event. The 20th e ticket event. Show it why viewers, drivers love attending this night. The hard action, the trauma, the excitement, the broken hearts, and the great stories will come down to the last handful of laps. At the World Center of Racing, 28 laps to go in the Darrington Woodworking, Florida 500. Great restart by that bottom line. Jua is going to choose to stay with Burns as they go up high. Now it's Jackson Carter leading the bottom line, heading to the one. Spencer Burns sits in second, Matthew Brower in third, and they've locked in top side. But you can see Matthew Brower kind of on edge up against that outside lane. What? He knows a win is in sight, no. and he's ready to bring home the hardware for four. Now we talked about it, Toyota's oh, only yeah. got one each ticket event ever in that 09 America. Weirdo. Came from Daytona and NWP 400, Wyatt Tinsley. Do they get their second? But Chevy, as per usual, is there and ready to strike. Big move by Kevin Champagne back there. Went down low past the three. Now he's going to put Booty out to dry. He's quickly 
making his way back up. How about this, Jack Sinclair? What a comeback for the driver of the 44. Gets the swipe of the valve from the five machine, but is up in that second position. Burns in the middle. Kevin Champagne on the outside. Matthew Brower stuck in the middle, and here comes a big shuffle from about seventh on back. Champagnes are together in the back, but up front, Jua Parr. They have gotten away from this pack. A bit of a gap now between them and Vila with Burns beside him. And they've really pulled away, and Abraham Vila now sits in that third position. And you see all the machines that have lined up, either wheel to wheel, toe to toe, or shoving for a move. Vila to the outside. Shotgun run. Here he goes. Wheel to wheel. He won't get up the line. We'll have the opportunity to turn one. They roll right past those two. They hand the draft out of the front. Now they're going to probably be out of the top five. Matthew Brower hanging jump up there. He is now the new underdog story. Minus Riker Byron there in 10. Byron won the Battle of the Beach this Tuesday at our night in America. His first win and his first community event win. Can he back it up with the need ticket? Just 26 laps to go to know. Up front, though, Vila now ahead of Walker. Horley makes the move down low to try and get the push from Jua. Side by side for second, but Vila keeps the lead, but not for long. Here comes the deuce. It's the push right one up front at Daytona, but Frank Horley wants to get back. in the Florida 500, but now he's got the rear end of that one machine all up in his windshield, two by two, three wide looking, 25 to go, and now Holy puts the move on Vila, goes down low, leaves him out to get hit by the top side, Horley out to the lead, Spencer Burns, Jackson Carr, Carr to fifth, Mitchum to seventh, shuffling again outside this top 20, Those to new picking, Rowe, Bomar, Gavin Austin, Everyone's looking for a move. Out of the pocket goes Chua. Looking for the lead goes through Chua. Top of the board is the five at Daytona. But now two gets a push from Carr. It's not going to be enough. Top two getting away from the pack once more. Now Chua tries to block the bottom. Crosses downstairs. Hangs in front of that two machine. Vila top side lined up with Aiden Walker. Here's a three wide move behind. That's Kevin Champagne trying to find a lifeline. He gets his brother in tow, and the Champagne start working together for the first time tonight. Problem is.